Look what we have today, everybody. So, we have a 200-year-old artifact here. Have to be careful when you do that because you could snag a piece of veneer. But this brings up a very controversial subject in art, and an important one. But first, let's just take a look at one of the rarest and most short-lived styles in furniture history, which showcases the height of the art of inlay occurring here during the Charles X period, with this remarkable precision in the quality of execution. But what we're really looking for in the art of period furniture is a work that presents a high degree of the objective quality of beauty relative to other works of the same kind. And so we first ask if the work is whole. Is there anything that needs to be added here or perhaps taken away? Or is the work fundamentally complete? And fundamentally complete is where my judgment on a piece like this ends simply because I do not possess a mastery of this particular art form relative to its makers such that I could confidently judge any more specifically. But since the work is fundamentally complete, we then try to determine if it's harmonious. With all the parts present, are they complementary to one another? Such as this blue-gray marble, which was planned with a natural white spot that aligns with the keyholes of the piece. And this quality of harmony is integral to what makes something beautiful. And so if it's harmonious, and if it's complete, we then look for radiance. You know, what's the universal truth being conveyed by this work of art? And does it possess an aspirational nature that exceeds my personal limitations? Now this part of the desk is referred to as the theater because it's always very dramatic. And this one very specially presents an inlaid decor that simulates a private gated courtyard true to the privacy of the letters that would have been written and stored here. But anyway, for furniture that is art, we tend to have to look back to an original timeline in furniture history when furniture was most skillfully and artistically created. And for various socio-economic, socio-technological reasons, this timeline situates between the Renaissance and the year 1840. But it makes sense, with furniture taking up so much of our visual space, that at some point it was the subject a very thorough artistic expression. And so the collector's process is one of looking through tens of thousands of old pieces of furniture to find the few that remain from this original timeline and which are still in good enough condition, but which present the highest degree of beauty possible in a given style and at a given level of overall quality. But then what makes some period pieces such a successful art is in how they bring art seamlessly into our practical home environment. But if we look at the back of the canvas, we'll see that there's actually nothing there, just like with a painting. But this work is only in part an illusion because it's meticulously expressed in a three-dimensional form, which can actually reach out from the wall, out from what would otherwise be pure illusion, into our practical daily lives. <laughs> 